Along Wisconsin's northern coast, rivers draining the land flow into the cold, blue waters of the freshwater sea, Lake Superior. Their waters mix and mingle in shallow coastal wetlands called freshwater estuaries. Just as Lake Superior shapes them, the estuaries in turn influence the lake through the quality of the water they send her in a dynamic relationship that affects the people, wildlife, and plants of the region. Like a string of pearls, freshwater estuaries grace Lake Superior's sweeping shoreline. Each estuary is a unique treasure, a pearl, connected by the waters of Lake Superior. And each tells a story best shared by the people who cherish them. Over 20 freshwater estuaries mark the shoreline of Wisconsin's northern coast. They all have experienced many changes. Only now are we beginning to appreciate the function and importance of these unique coastal wetlands. It's important that, that we protect all of these uh, lakes, the rivers, the creeks, the streams, and, and uh, because if we don't do it now, it's going to be too late. My vision for the for the estuaries of Lake Superior is someday uh, achieving some national recognition in terms of the designation of a National Estuary Research Reserve here in Lake Superior Basin. It would be the death knell for all these coastal wetlands if all of a sudden the nation started tapping into the freshwater resources of Lake Superior and kept it at the same level all the time. These coastal wetlands require fluctuation. Um, it's a natural process. We'll continue to maintain the, the facilities uh, to allow people to use the islands, but at the same time we want to protect the, uh, some of the, the wilderness qualities that attract people out here. It's just connected to so many other cool areas um, that, uh, and I'm not alone in this, I, a lot of people feel that connection. Estuaries and rivers on Lake Superior is that they have a very good ability to clean and repair themselves if we just do our thing as humans and take care of the water quality and the watershed in the area. It's also work with, with landowners to restore the health of the entire watershed so that what we do down here will in the long term uh, remain in good condition. I think if we can do that and if we can achieve those goals uh, then we can look towards the next step which would be probably uh, starting to restore some of the native species. The main river will come back but there's no way for it to come back unless uh, uh, they start way back up at the headwaters and work from there. And the thing is education. Helping the rest of the nation to see how important you know, this little spot in the Midwest is you know, for our nation's economy, our nation's ecology. And it's right here in our own backyard. And I, I really hope that we have the foresight to preserve this and save this for our children and the next generations that come because it's such a unique place. And we'll hold it as a near and dear place for us um, as citizens of the state of Wisconsin. And that's a real bright future. Today, through the leadership of citizens, agencies, and tribes, we are working together to restore and protect these rare treasures. A string of pearls connected not only by the water, but by the people who cherish them. The stories of these estuaries remind us of how much our past and future are linked to the water and to each other.